I am Kamala Harris. My pronouns are she and her. I am a woman sitting at the table wearing a blue suit. I'm Chance the Gardener. The Gardener? Yes. Mr. Chance, I'm very pleased to meet you. Yes. So tell me about Joe. Yes. I remember Joe. And looking holistically at the connection between that and housing and looking holistically at the incentives we in the federal government can create for local and state governments to actually engage in planning in a holistic manner that includes prioritizing affordable housing for working people. I've never been allowed outside of the house. Why is the bed like this? Oh, well, I mean, I would just say, hey, Joe. Uh, I, I, I like to sleep with my head facing the north. I sleep better that way. Instead of saying no, we can't, let's say yes, we can. But this is facing west. What is facing west? The bed. Do you know Raphael? No, sir, I don't believe I do. Because I have a message for him. Yeah, girl, I'm out here in these streets. And let me tell you, you're right, Taraji. There is so much at stake in this moment. The majority of us believe in freedom and equality. A small black man gave me a message for Raphael. But these extremists, as they say, they're not like us. Well, I still don't believe I know the man, Mr. Gardner. No, please, lie still. To understand where we exist in the history and in the moment as it relates not only to the past, but the future. Yes, right out of existence. So let's now welcome the candidates to the stage, Vice President Kamala Harris and President Donald Trump. Thank you, see, have fun. Thank you. On television, Mr. President, you look much smaller. Mr. Garner, do you agree with Ben, or do you think we can stimulate growth through temporary incentives? Let it always inspire us. Let it always be the source of our optimism. As long as the roots are not severed, all is well. And let that then inspire us by helping us to be inspired to solve the problems. And all will be well in the garden. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been. In the garden. You know? Yes. In a garden, growth has its season. What can be unburdened by what has been. First comes spring and summer, but then we have fall and winter, and then we get spring and summer again. What can be unburdened by what has been. Spring and summer. Yes. <clears throat> then fall and winter. Yes. What can be unburdened by what has been. What can be unburdened by what has been. I think what our insightful young friend is saying. What we can see, what we believe can be unburdened by what has been. Is that we welcome the inevitable seasons of nature, but we're upset by the seasons of our economy. What can be unburdened by what has been. Yes, there will be growth in the spring. What can be unburdened by what has been. Hmm. Mm. Mm. What can be unburdened by what has been. Well, Mr. Garner, I must admit that is one of the most refreshing and optimistic statements I've heard in a very, very long time. Who we can be unburdened by who we have <laughs> John C. Gardner, Mr. Rand's close friend and advisor, was at the meeting this morning. I found Mr. Gardner to have a feeling for this country that we need more of. And today he wants to offer his full support and endorsement for Kamala to be the nominee of the Democrats this year. Quote Mr. Gardner, a most intuitive man. So Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. Is that Gardner? No, he's a real Gardner. You can he does watch talk like one, become very beautiful. but I think he's brilliant. We campaign with the plan. Uppercase T, uppercase P, the plan. And I'll say right now, he never learned to read and write. Had no brains at all. Do you plan to visit the border? Uh, 
Um, not today. Stuff with rice pudding between the ears. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. Good. I am fine, too. Good, good. Yes, good. We're fine. <laughs> yeah, fine. Okay. Can you please try and explain to me what you interpret by what can be unburdened by what has been. My editors and I have been wondering if you would consider writing a book for us, something about your um, political philosophy. What do you say? What does that mean? I can't write. <laughs> of course not. Who can nowadays? Listen, I have trouble writing a postcard to my children. I'll provide you with the very best ghostwriter, proofreaders. I can't read. I don't know if I should say. I don't know if I should say. <laughs> of course you can. No one has the time. There's a line in Marx. We we glance at things. We watch television. I like to watch TV. We all watched the television coverage. No one reads. It basically says you have to wipe out what has been to arrive in the new. And where's and, it from? What can be unburdened by what has been. It's not a direct translation, but it occurs in Karl Marx. I know that Ben said, keep it small and quiet. And I don't want to go against Ben's wishes. But I thought it would be good while our close friends are carrying Ben to- You're looking at characters. You're looking at professional rest. Do you imagine that the Iron Sheik, you know, who is the Iron Sheik? Who is Triple H? What about Max? Well, he could never take an election. I could Correct. never conceive People of this country need to be awakened. Who is the undertaker? Do you think he actually works in a, in a mortuary? What about Lawson? He's charismatic, exciting. These are characters. Gentlemen, time is running out. We must come to a decision. George W. Bush, as a debater in Texas for the governorship, was really, really smart. But what about Chauncey Gardner? And suddenly he got real dumb and folksy. But what do we know of the man? Absolutely nothing. Do you imagine he actually says nuclear? We don't have an inkling of his past. Correct. That could be an asset. He knows it's nuclear. I would learn to say nuclear. I could say nuclear. Man's past cripples him. His background turns into a swamp and invites scrutiny. Yeah, I gotta be careful with that nuclear physics. And up until this time, he hasn't said anything that could be held against him. I can get Democrats to correct me and look like assholes every time. I do believe, gentlemen, that if we want to hold on to the presidency, our one and only chance is Chauncey Gardner. There's an old FDR line, which is nothing in politics happens by accident. Don't get taken in at level one. 